the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Truman Bradley saying welcome to the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. And now, Raleigh Cigarettes present Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, and welcome to the Bundles for Skelton program. <laughs> It's really, though, it's a lot of fun being here tonight. It's just like a big Hollywood opening. Yeah, did you see that crowd outside the studio, Red? Did I see them? Uh, Three of them was my girl. Oh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Brad, coming through that crowd was really sort of a thrill because I didn't think anybody would recognize me. All of a sudden, someone yelled, Red Skelton's in a crowd! And they all turned around and looked at me. Gee, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I was sorry I yelled. <laughs> Skelton, you know, I've never worked with you before. No, Are you a pretty funny. good comedian? Well, I don't know, but I'm the best they could get for 36 coupons. <laughs> <laughs> Red, I understand that the sponsor signed you up at dinner last night at the Brown Derby. Yes, he had his choice of me or two vegetables. Two vegetables. <laughs> uh, but really, our sponsors are really... He's really a fine man. No kidding. He got a great sense of humor, yeah. too. I'd, he'd tell a joke, and then I'd laugh. <laughs> then I'd tell a joke. Then he'd tell a joke, and I'd laugh. <laughs> oh, I see. But, uh, but it must be wonderful having a program all your own. Yeah, though. I'll say it is, Brad. Just think, I can do anything on this program I want to. I can even have my grandmother on here if I wanted it. Well, why don't you have your grandmother on here? I think I will. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, we'll build a wrestling arena. Here. Here. Oh, by the way, Brad, did you get the phone call that came in for you a couple of minutes ago? Oh. It was from a man from the Automobile Finance Company. Finance Company? Yes. What do you want, Rick? I don't know. He just says, we give up. Where is it? <laughs> Gee. <laughs> Gee, Red, you don't think they'll take my car away, do you? No. Finance companies don't take your car away anymore. They don't? No. They just go over to your garage and melt it down right there. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to worry as long as nobody takes my wardrobe. Yeah? I'd hate to lose my reputation as the best-dressed man in Hollywood. Yes, that would... You're the best-dressed man in Hollywood? Oh, sure. Well, uh, unscrew my beret and catch a head cold. <laughs> <laughs> you being a well-dressed man of Hollywood, what do you think of this suit? Just the thing for picking grapes. Yeah. <laughs> Red, how much did you pay for that suit? It cost sixteen fifty. Of course, I got fourteen pair of pants in the first dance Saturday night at the Palladium. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Skelton, but I have a little novelty I'm sure would go very well on your program. Oh, well, that's fine. I'm... <laughs> I'm looking for novelties. Uh, what do you do? Well... I sing Daddy and drink a glass of water at the same time. <laughs> you sing Daddy and drink a glass of water at the same time? Yeah. How does it... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does it sound? Terrible, but it's cooling. Yeah. Well, right after the program, I'll meet you at Long Beach. Hello, yes. Red. Oh, Harriet Hilliard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You really look pretty tonight. Oh, thank you, Red. You look clean yourself. <laughs> Say, you really look nice, though. How do you like my new open-toed shoes, hmm? Is that what they are? Well, what did you think? Well, I didn't know whether your toes were creeping or your shoes were backing up. <laughs> I can see you don't know anything about women's clothes. Well, I don't. But in Hollywood, you don't have to. <laughs> hey, look, maybe you could tell me something. Why do all the women wear slacks out here? My girl doesn't, you know. Why not? Well, she isn't fat enough. <laughs> Thanks a lot, both of you. <laughs> but Harry... <laughs> but Harry, uh, just tell me one thing. Uh, I'd like to tell you one thing, rather. We're really happy 
to have you here on the program and being part of it. It's oh, really thank you, Red. And thanks, too, for the flowers you sent me. Oh, oh they're beautiful. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like them? Oh, yes. But you didn't have to buy me flowers. Well, I didn't exactly buy them. I picked them out of your front yard. <laughs> <laughs> Say, where were you before? I was looking all over for you. Really, Harriet? Yes. You were looking for me? Mm-hmm. Gee, <laughs> they always told me I'd never know the difference. <laughs> Well, look, Harriet, I've got an idea. After this show... I'll wait. <laughs> Came by carrier pigeon, didn't it? <laughs> look, Harriet, I've got an idea. After the show is over, lest you and I make friends over a cup of coffee, huh? I don't like coffee. Well, then how about a nice, cold, tasty ice cream soda? I hate sodas. Well, what about a glass of water? Ugh. Well, what do you like, mothballs? <laughs> Hello, folks. Oh, Alzi Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are proud of you, Ozzy, the way you led the band. Now go back and lead it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Red, but Harriet and I have to get ready for our duet. Duet? We really hate to leave you. It'll be dull and lonely without you. Put some expression in those lines. <laughs> Come on, Harriet. <laughs> Well, look, I don't know why... It, that's my line, if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't know, but for some subtle reason, Mr. Nelson, I, I don't like you. And another thing, why do you carry that baton around with you? Well, because it can't walk. Come on along, Harriet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Harriet can't go uh, away from here. Besides, you just met her. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Red. I've known Ozzy for years. You have? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We've been great friends. Oh, Anybody want to shoot some pool after the program? <laughs> One of our great American traditions is that of telling your hostess you had a wonderful evening, whether you have or have not. We introduce two young people who've just spent a miserable evening, and here they are. Goodbye now. Goodbye now. We've spent a most enjoyable night. Your husband's so cute when he's tight. Yes. Well, goodbye. 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 Goodbye now. Goodbye now. We think your house is just the last word. And your brother's jokes, the funniest I've heard. Really, I thought I'd die. Well, goodbye. We've really spent a lovely evening. Yes, the dinner was especially fine. Oh, and those movies of the children, delightful. And wherever did you find that delicious wine? Goodbye now. Goodbye now. We hate to leave our hostess and host. But as they say in France, adios. And so goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye now. now. That's what they really did say. But here's what they would have said if they'd only told the truth. Goodbye now. Goodbye now. And though I know this is impolite, I spent a most unhappy night. So did I. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye now. Goodbye now. We'd like to file a last complaint. Yeah, don't think this ain't been charming, cause it ain't. <laughs> well, goodbye. 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 Your Uncle Charlie's corny card tricks. We didn't find amusing a bit. We've spent a most delightful evening. But we'll have to admit that this wasn't it. <laughs> goodbye now. Goodbye now. And though we never forget a face, we'll make exceptions in your case. And so goodbye. Goodbye now. That was uh, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard singing Goodbye Now. Oh, Harriet, don't go away. I want to ask you something. Sure, Red. What, what, what do you want? Well, what do you, what, what, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> this is not the American tobacco program. <laughs> 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 Too 
bad we can't leave that in. <laughs> Look, I saw, <laughs> I saw you talking to one of the studio police a few minutes ago. Now, not that I mind, but I'd like to know how, where I stand. Is he one of your boyfriends, too? Oh, no. He's just an old friend of the family. Oh. And I was so glad to see him that I just walked up to him and gave him a great big hug. Oh, and I... taking the law in your own hands, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, Reg, you don't understand. He's married and has a big family. Oh, he has a beautiful home and two of the finest St. Bernards I've ever seen. Oh, just another cop with two big dogs, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. You know, really, in truth, do you ever stop to figure that everybody makes fun of the police? I mean, they've always pulled jokes about them and everything, but did you ever figure out what all police have to go through? Oh, they really have a tough job. They really do. I'd like to try and show the different type of police that we really have and what they have to go through. Now, to start off, a lot of times when you mention the word police, Right away, you get the mental picture of an officer like this. All right, bud, get moving. You can't park here. Get out of there before I give you a ticket. Now, you know, when he yells like... Eh, he doesn't mean... He's not really that type of a guy at all. What he really means is this. All right, bud, get moving. You can't park here. Get out of there before I give you a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get into the lives of the police. First, we'll start off with a, a mounted policeman. Of course, you know what a mounted policeman is. That's a guy that can look in five directions, cut in front of two women driver, and give out a ticket while in midair. <laughs> uh, they're usually officers like this. Hey, pull over there. Well, what's that? I said pull over there. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said good morning, Governor. No, I didn't say good morning, Governor. I... Oh. <laughs> Governor. Oh, Governor, well, nice day for a veto, isn't it? <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> sorry if I've uh, slowed you up a little, Governor. Wait a minute. If you're the Governor, what are you doing with a California state seal on your car? Why, this is California. It is? How'd I get over here? I'm an Arizona cop. <laughs> the mounted policeman. I once knew a mounted policeman. Oh, there was really a terrific horseman. He used to ride his horse backwards. He said it made the horse nervous to have anybody look over his shoulder. <laughs> well, a mounted policeman uh, are usually like this. I'll play the part of the mounted policeman. Whoa! <laughs> horse must have on rubber shoes. <laughs> Say, uh, pull over there, fellow. What's the idea of weaving down the middle of the road like that? Why don't you stay on the, your line, huh? Uh, excuse it, please, officer. I'm not wanting to dirty the white lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, bud. I'll have to write you out a ticket. What's your name? Stanislaus Bogoselowski Ritznap. Yeah! <laughs> Pass, friend. <laughs> With a name like that, he'd be better off with a number. <laughs> if I know this country, he's got one. <laughs> then we have a bashful policeman. Did you ever see a policeman with an inferiority complex? They usually patrol the lover's lane out in the suburbs. Suburb, that's for, uh, Latin for long bus ride. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Now, this uh, officer has just received a call to check up on a holdup out in Lover's Lane. And every time he gets around parked cars, he gets very shy, very bashful. One of these type of guys. Well, there's the car. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful night? Oh, yes. Oh, pardon me, fella. <laughs> Your lips are like pedals. Yeah, bicycle pedals. Hey, fella. Oh, someday you'll be the greatest band leader in the world. And make $10,000 a week, then we can get married. <laughs> $10,000 a week? Ah, that's youth. Here they are, willing to sacrifice everything and just struggle along. <laughs> $10,000 a week. The only, guy ever ten, uh, the only guy that ever got $10,000 a week for leading a band was Jesse James. <laughs> Pardon me, fellas. Will you but always I speak? love me? Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Will you call me your Harriet? Will you call me your Ozzy? Will somebody call me when this is over? 
Uh, say, Ozzie, don't you see me standing here? Yeah, don't you see me ignoring you? Yeah. Oh, where can we go to be alone? I don't know. Why don't you get yourself a couple of parachutes and try Devil's Tower? <laughs> now, so why don't you do your duty and then go back to sleep? Okay. Now, look, I don't want to be an old Budinsky, but have you heard anything around here about a holdup? Oh, yes, the fellow just held us up. Yeah? Well, I'll have to make out a report. What did you lose? About ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> then we have the tough cops, you know. I, I once knew an officer who was so tough that he used to eat raw meat and then sit in boiling water to cook it. <laughs> but he was really... <laughs> He was really the sweetest guy in the world, even when he was giving out tickets, the, until one of those companion drivers would butt in the conversation. You know what a companion driver is. Well, uh, this time, I'll play the part of a companion driver. <clears throat> Come on, pull over to the curb. Why, ain't we drunk enough to drive? <laughs> hey, pipe down, Joe. This cop looks tough. Yeah, uh, you just ran through a light. We're going to a fire. Yeah, we're going to start one. <laughs> oh, Osmus, huh? Yeah, and we'll vote for him the next time. Come oh. <laughs> on, uh, let's see your license. No. Officer, he hasn't got a license. He's my buddy. I'm teaching him to drive. <laughs> well? <laughs> well, in that case, let me see your license. Now, wait a minute. Let's not get nosy, officer. <laughs> come on, come on. Somebody's got to have a license. I'm very sorry, but I haven't got a license. No, he couldn't get a license because he's nearsighted. <laughs> the poor boy, he can only see about three feet in front of him. <laughs> well, then how in the world does he drive a car? He just follows the radiator cap. <laughs> feeling pretty good tonight. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you off this time, but, but I want you to get a license, see? Thanks, officer. I'll get one the first thing in the morning. Yeah, that's darn nice of you, officer. Here, have a drink. Oh, no, I never drink. Ah, oh, come on. Have a drink. <laughs> it's good stuff. If you don't believe me, smell his breath. <laughs> oh, drunk driving, huh? Do you realize you can get a year in jail for taking just one drink? A year in jail for just one drink? That's right. How many drinks has your friend had? I don't know. <laughs> but I think you better give him a rate. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you can get thrown in jail for drinking in your car. Oh, well, then that's different. What do you mean? Well, this isn't his car. Oh, no. Oh, no? Well, then whose is it, then? Oh, just some guy that stepped into a drugstore with a motor run for a short coat. <laughs> Oh, a stolen car. Oh, uh, don't worry, officer. He didn't steal it in this state. <laughs> did you drive it? Did you drive it over the state line? We didn't fly it in. <laughs> well, then that's a federal case. Is that better? Oh, come on. Come on, come on. I got to take you guys down to the police station. Oh, no, you don't, Bub. <laughs> Bub, call a wagon. You ain't riding in this car. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute now, take it easy Come on, come on, move over Oh, wait a minute, Bob Bob, <laughs> we're taxpayers, Bob Bob, call a wagon and make it wagon number two The springs are better <laughs> Listen, for two cents, I'd punch you right in the nose All right, here's two cents And I'd like to see you do it Well, do I get a receipt? <laughs> the policeman that has really the toughest life of all is the rookie. No matter what they do, they're always, it's always wrong. And this time, uh, we go to the desk, Sergeant, where one of the boys has just been called on the carpet. Uh, did you send for me, Sergeant? Officer Skelton, were you at the filling station last night when it was held up? Yes, sir. Didn't you see the man holding it up? Yes, sir. And didn't he look suspicious? Well, I couldn't tell. He was wearing a mask. <laughs> Skelton, I'm afraid you'll never make a police officer. No. I've been reading your reports here. Oh. 
Let's see, it says, last Wednesday you were told to break up a gang of high school kids who were hanging around the pool room. I tried, but those kids were tough. <laughs> Gee, some of them were 10 or 11 years old. <laughs> and full of vitamin B1. <laughs> oh, they couldn't have been that tough. Oh, no. Look at this letter I got from one of them. Huh. It says, Dear Officer Red, if you don't stay away from our hangout, we'll break both of your legs. Signed, Positively. Well, I'm going to give you one more chance. Now, okay. you take over here at the desk. I have to go down and do some work with a lie detector. Oh, by the way, how is the little woman? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, and Sergeant, if you're going out the front, would you move my car? I forgot and left it parked in front of a fire plug. What? <laughs> Skelton, at times I wonder how you ever got your junior G-man badge By the way, how did you get it? I thought they only gave those to little kids They do, and everybody thought I looked very cute in my Curly Temple Wampers <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Skelton, from now on you can just call me Sergeant Stinky Stinky? Won't you get mad? Why worry? You're on two weeks' notice now What do you got to lose? I wish I were a woman. I'd have slapped his face. <laughs> oh, well, it's good to be able to sit down, though. Gosh, I wish I could take off these tight shoes. Oh, what tight shoes cops wear. Oh, I wish I could just take them off and let my toes spread out like the spokes in a wagon wheel. <laughs> I thought that looked too funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I better make a few calls. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Proceed at once to Moe's Delicatessen. An actor just stole the ham. An actor just stole the ham. Bring back the one with the government seal. <laughs> officer, officer. What is it? There's a riot in front of Shapiro's department store, 27 Hill Street. Open from 9 to 5. Sale tomorrow. Women's and Mrs. Dresses. All sizes, reasonably priced. Easy times. Come early. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are you? I ain't the man from the May Company. <laughs> we, did I hear somebody knock? Yes, I heard somebody knock. <laughs> Sound man will get a ticket for poking. <laughs> Officer, I have a complaint to make. This man has been following me. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fella, straighten up. Put your eyes back in, will you? <laughs> Uh, say, uh, 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 police station, uh, how did I get here? You followed this woman here. Uh, 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 gee, it's always like that. <laughs> Every time I follow a pretty girl, uh, 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 something breaks the spell. Well, aren't you going to arrest this man? No, he's just a Hollywood wolf. This town, this town is full of them. Yes, I know. Down on Hollywood Boulevard, when a guy see, meets a girl, he says, Hello? <laughs> Say, uh, by the way, what do you do for a living? I'm a model. And you know, all day long, people keep looking at me. I'm developing a complex. You're a model? Yes. Maybe you could suggest something that will kill that feeling that someone is staring at me. Well, yes, one thing might help. Next time you go out for lunch, try slipping something on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, you get in there Let me in go, there. let me go You can't do this to me You ain't got no warrant You ain't got no Haber's corpus You ain't even got a temporary disjunction No, but we got you, bub <laughs> Let go of him, officer uh, Name, please Smith, uh, Wonderful Smith Wonderful Smith? Yes Is that your real name? Yes, sir, my name is Wonderful And my sister's name, Marvelous I got two brothers, Colossal and Terrific <laughs> and my other sister, Stupendia. <laughs> and the baby, not bad. <laughs> what happened there? We moved out of Hollywood. <laughs> well, wonderful, what do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Uh, let me see. What else have you? <laughs> oh, no, I mean, are you innocent? <laughs> Why, Judge, of course not. Are you? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, fellow. Looks like I got... <laughs> Looks like I got to lock you up, fellow. 
Uh, can I call my lawyer? Yeah, but don't use that phone. Use that pay phone over there. Sure. Uh... You put in a slug, didn't you? <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me number one, five, ring three, Washington, D.C. Oh, your lawyer's in Washington. Yes, sir. Hello? Mr. Wilkie? <laughs> <laughs> this is Wonderful Smith. What? You don't know me? Maybe you know my cousin then, uh, Joe Smith. He's right there in Washington. He's got a little shoe shine stand on K Street. <laughs> That is, he had a shoe shine stand, but he went broke. Now he ain't got no business. What's that? Oh, there's a lot of people in Washington ain't got no business there. <laughs> oh, I see. You still don't remember me? Well, I'm the wonderful Smith from Hollywood. Maybe you've seen me in the pictures. What's that, Mr. Wilkie? You say you ain't never going to see another movie as long as you live. <laughs> What's my trouble? Well, sir, I bought a suit for a dollar down and a dollar a week. But the weeks are rolling round faster than my dollar. <laughs> Walking by on Main Street. <laughs> I was looking in a clothing store window, and I said to a man standing there, Look at that beautiful red plaid suit. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I was yelling, Put me down. <laughs> yes, sir, and when he put me down, I ran out of the store, but I had on the red suit. <laughs> Now I'm having trouble with the finance company. I was paying interest on the interest. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Security? Yes, sir, I left security. But what I want to know is, how long do I have to pay before I get my right arm back? <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Mr. Wilkins? I shouldn't worry. Because you'll come and get me out just as soon as you figure out a way to balance the budget. Oh, Mr. Wilkie, then you mean I was in jail for life. Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra playing Swinging on the Golden Gate, and very good, too. <laughs> hey, Red, I didn't know you were so well misinformed about the police force. Oh, sure. Oh, you don't think I know anything about the police forces, huh? Well, I'll have you to know that I used to be a private detective. Oh, really? Yes, that's right. I'll never forget my first case. Your first case? What happened? After the third bottle, <laughs> we played What's My Name and Nobody Knew. <laughs> You're a card. But tell me more anyway. <laughs> tell me about your experiences as a private detective. Well, one day I was in my office, and the telephone started to ring. Hello? Skelton Detective Agency. Uh, say, I I'd like to have some protection. I have a feeling I'm going to be shot. Oh, what makes you think so? Well, my wife is standing in front of me with a dirty look and a gun. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll be right over. Where do you live? On Sepulveda Boulevard. Sepulveda Boulevard. Yes, How do you spell Sepulveda? Uh, it's S. S. E. E. P. P. Uh, U. U. L. L. 
It's too bad. If he lived on Vine Street, we could have saved him. <laughs> oh, hello there, Detective Bradley. Hello, Chief. Sorry I'm late. I've been out with my girl. Say, are you still going with Big Nose Annie? Oh, Chief. Chief, her nose ain't so big. Oh, no? Then why does she keep it in a holster? <laughs> well, Chief, you know how she freckles. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I was sure glad to hear that you saw the Eagle Hotel case, Chief. Yeah, I caught the guy just as, as he was leaving in the hotel room. Well, tell me, did he have the towels in his suitcase? No, but he had the chambermaid in his grip. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what a joke. Listen to it, Fizz. <laughs> there, there. Take it easy now, Chiefy. The Sandman will be along pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Chief, I uh, saw you shadowing that blonde. <laughs> Uh, did you hang anything on her? No, vice versa. <laughs> well, you certainly got a great system around this office. Everything's so neat, everything right in its place. Yeah, that's right. Say, while I'm thinking of it, go over to the file marked confidential and get me a ham sandwich, will you? Quite a ride. Blotting paper will do. <clears throat> you know, Skelton, you're really a great detective. Yeah, I'm known as Bloodhound Skelton. The human bloodhound. That's me. The human bloodhound. Well, don't stand there wagging your tail. Mr. Bradley! <laughs> well, anyway, I admire you, Chief. You're fearless. Absolutely fearless. Yeah, I think nothing of walking into a Hollywood nightclub with just a bayonet. <laughs> well, I carry a fork myself. Well, <laughs> well, if you're effeminate. <clears throat> oh, well. <clears throat> Say, uh, Red, uh... Do we have to go out on any cases today? Yes. Did you hear about the trunk murder? Trunk murder? Well, it wasn't exactly a trunk murder. They found a dead midget in a zipper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think did it? Huh? Who do you think did it? His wife, but I think she's got an alibi. Yeah? Yeah, she said she met him in a bread counter and he, he came already sliced. I <laughs> I'm beginning to read the blotches on the paper now. <laughs> oh, hello, madam. What can I do for you? I'm Detective Skelton. Well, uh, do you follow women... Well, yes, if it's business. <laughs> Ow! What happened? I just went out of business. <laughs> well, that's life. What's the next case? Well, say, uh, why don't we go down to Burlesque Show and arrest that girl who does a strip tease with marshmallows? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I said, let's go down to the Burlesque Show and arrest that girl who does a strip tease with marshmallows. What did you say? <laughs> Skip it. Skip it. <laughs> Hello, Skelton Detective Agent. Jeepers Peepers. Sorry to disturb you, but could you come right over? Well, sure. Something happened? Yes. What? Murder. <laughs> Murder? I'll be over there before you can say Jack Robinson. Did anybody say it? <laughs> Well, this looks like the house, Red. Shall I uh, push the doorbell? Nah, let it...